Hello, Happy New Year and welcome to my first video of 2022. Um, I'll be talking today about why I became an English teacher. So before I get into that, please like, subscribe, share with any colleagues who may find it useful and if you feel like it, do comment because I always respond. So why did I become a teacher? Well, there are quite a lot of reasons and I'm probably not gonna mention all of them today. Um, I've just tried to think of some of the, the uh, top reasons why I became an English teacher. So I have five reasons um, on my notes in front of me uh, and I'm just going to go through them in no particular order. So I'm not saying the first one was the, the biggest reason for me or the last one was the biggest reason. They are in just random order really, the order that I thought of them in. Um, so the first one, I've already made a, another video about this, so I'm not going to talk too long about it, but basically I was unhappy with the job that I was doing, which was working in law. I was a paralegal working in um, firstly commercial and then personal injury litigation. Uh, so I was basically helping people to um, sue other people. Um, in terms of commercial litigation, one of the partners described his job as helping rich people to get richer um, and that's something that doesn't really sit very well with me today um, at the time I felt it was something that I could live with but nowadays it really doesn't feel like something I would have been happy doing for most of my life um, I, as I say I'm not going to say too much about it I think it's enough to just say that I didn't really like the environment um, that you're in when you work in law in the UK. I think it is different in other countries, um, certainly from lawyers that I've met in, in Russia and other countries, um, the way they describe how they work, it doesn't sound quite as bad as, as in the UK, um, but the culture of, of working the legal profession in the UK is very competitive, very dog eat dog, um, and it leads to people doing all kinds of crazy things like um, spending basically their whole week at work um, and that's just really not a life that I wanted. So um, that was what really kind of inspired me to, to leave uh, that profession and look for something else um, but I could have gone in a lot of different directions so why did I specifically go for uh, teaching English? So I think one of the first things is that I wanted to travel and um, obviously being a native speaker, I've had certain opportunities to travel that a non-native English teacher may not have. Um, I was initially attracted by, I'm, I'm slightly ashamed to say this really, I was initially attracted by some of the advertising for native English speakers to teach abroad with slogans like teach on the beach um, I mean, that does sound pretty awesome, I have to say. Um, but it doesn't really inspire the kind of professionalism that I hope that I bring to, um, to, to the teaching jobs that I've done and the management jobs that I've done. Um, as I say, non-natives don't necessarily get as many opportunities. Um, there are opportunities out there. I do know uh, non-native English teachers that have gone and worked in other countries. Um, it's a case, I think, of constantly um, knocking on, on doors and um, not literally, obviously, sending emails and um, constantly trying to find those opportunities. Uh, they are out there. Um, I will at some point make a video dealing with my nativism because um, I know it's a, it's a hot topic in ELT and um, the, I mean, in short, the way I, I really see it is, yes, I am a native speaker. Yes, that does give me certain advantages. Um, but I think that I would be a fool if I didn't take advantage of um, the advantages that are out there to me and um, try to maybe change the system. Um, but it feels like a case of don't hate the player, hate the game. Um, you know anyone who has an advantage I, I would expect them to take advantage of it so um, you know models are beautiful people um, unfortunately we can't all necessarily um, 
be those people. So they, they take advantage of something that's probably a large part genetic. Um, I'm not saying that models don't do anything to you know keep their good shape or, or anything like that. Um, but obviously part of it is, is genetic as, as well. Um, the sports people generally are you know born with good genetics so again they're taking advantage of um, the situation really um, again they do train very hard so there is a, a lot of hard work and luck involved in that as well um, but those of us that aren't necessarily born with the right um, conditions may not ever get there no matter how much hard work and luck we have so I think you know anyone who is remotely successful at anything is really taking advantage of some um, advantages that they have um, and I really don't think that you can blame anybody who does that you can blame the system however um, and I think people that realize that they have advantages do have a responsibility to question those advantages and um, to possibly find ways to change the system to make it fairer um, and it's much easier to do that from inside the system than outside it so as I say I may make a video that goes into that in more depth but um, that's broadly my view on it and how I reconcile that um, so anyway I wanted to travel that was the key point um, and I have obviously had the chance to do that I've lived in four different countries uh, Uzbekistan, China, Oman and now Russia. Um, I wanted to learn about other cultures. Um, I didn't just want to go and live in an expat bubble in, in these places. So um, I've been and I, I've seen all of the, the tourist stuff certainly, but I've also tried to get more of an understanding of how local people actually really, really live um, and what, what's important to them, what their values are and, and these kind of things. Um, I think one of the things that I have learned from that um, is really just how similar we actually all are. Um, I, I feel like I was brought up uh, being told how people from different countries are different. Um, and even um, every country I, I've um, arrived in, I think people have tried to tell me like, you know, the people here are maybe different to people that you've met before. <laughs> And um, yes, of course, we, we have some differences, but on a, on a base level, we are actually more similar than different. We all uh, want the same things. We all want uh, some uh, success. We all want uh, good lives for ourselves and our families. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably the biggest thing I've learned that although we are um, to some extent different in the ways that we maybe think and um, the ways that we we recognize different um, d different occasions um, we're actually broadly more similar than we are different um, another reason is that I felt that I would be quite good at teaching um, and I think that I have hopefully uh, shown that now um, I thought that I had certain qualities that would uh, be beneficial such as I am a very patient person um, it does take a while to um, you know for, <laughs> for anything to to irritate me although I, I think I do tend to just remove myself from irritating situations quite a lot um, without necessarily making a scene um, I, I feel like I'm a good communicator um, and uh, I'm also a very organized uh, person uh, so I think those things actually um, are very good qualities to have as teachers I'm, I'm not saying that uh, all teachers need to have these qualities or that you can't be a teacher without some of these qualities. I think one of the greatest things about teaching English is that it attracts quite a, a broad spectrum of different people. And so lots of different people are bringing different things uh, to this profession. Um, compared to, to say, law, um, I think people are very similar in, in law, actually. Um, because I guess they have to be um, but when it comes to teaching there's a lot of room for creativity and innovation um, and I don't feel like I'm necessarily the most creative or innovative person um, so it, it's always nice to meet people who have these different qualities to me um, I think it makes for a much more interesting um, 
much more interesting job really. Um, another reason is that I wanted the challenge. Um, people are often surprised that I live in Russia. Um, they, they think that can't be easy. Um, why don't you, I mean, even Russians tell me, why don't you go back to the UK where your life will be easier? And um, it's because I don't necessarily want an easy life. Um, I mean, I do say things that are contrary to that about how I, <laughs> I like to have an easy life. Um, it's maybe one of my reasons for not having uh, not having children um, because I, I don't necessarily want the complication of all that. Um, but uh, no, I, I do want to be challenged. I do want to set challenges for myself and living in a foreign country is challenging. Um, if you don't know the language, which I would say I, I still don't really know Russian very well, um, then you know you have to grow in some some way when you challenge yourself and I want to always be growing I don't want to uh, become stagnant and um, just bored with life really um, I want to constantly be growing constantly developing um, and yeah that's that's the only way to do it you need to step outside your comfort zone um, and try things that are are different um, things that challenge your your ideas and beliefs. Um, and the last reason, the fifth reason, is that I wanted to do something that helps people. Um, and teaching English definitely does that. Uh, so I've certainly opened doors, I think, for, for many um, people. Um, you know, they've managed to get their IELTS score or um, some other exam and they've been able to go and enter university or to, to get a job or to um, you know, get a promotion in, in the job that they already have. Um, maybe just help them to help other people. Um, now that I'm much more involved in training teachers, um, you know, I know those efforts are going to actually impact more people because the people I train will train uh, students and um, you know, my, my efforts will go even further um, to, to doing that for people. I think the other thing that you get as a, a teacher is um, it's a chance to educate people um, in terms of uh, things like values. So, um, you know, I do have an opportunity to kind of challenge people's values. I, I wouldn't say that I challenge people's values in, in a strong way. Um, I have had some very challenging instant, um, instances in the classroom where people have, um, I mean, one of the most common ones I found in the Middle East was, was people um, idolizing Hitler. Um, that's quite a challenging thing to um, think about, really. And I didn't want to, I, I don't like to be confrontational in that challenge. Um, I think we can challenge people's views in a, in a softer way. Um, and I think that often leads to um, a better result. Uh, I think if you go too confrontational with people, uh, people just kind of get further entrenched in, in a position. And when that's something that seems quite a dangerous position, I don't think that's really what you want to do. So going softer uh, seems like a much better approach to me. So those are five reasons why I became an English teacher. Um, thank you very much if you've watched all the way to the end. Um, as I say, please do like and subscribe, uh, comment if you have any uh, thoughts and um, do share with any uh, colleagues who might find it useful as well. Um, so thank you very much and uh, see you next time.